Hello everyone, welcome to episode 6 of the Visible Mending Workshop presented by the Davenport Public Library. Today we're going to be talking about adding some applique to our sampler. We'll also be taking the felt patches that we made in episode 2 and adding them to our project. Applique has been used for mending and as a decorative technique for a long time, so you can easily find books and information on how to applique. Uh, including at the library, we have uh, several books, including this one, Simply Stitched with Applique. Um, I'm not even going to try to pronounce her name, but this is a fun book. Uh, she uses embroidery, felt, and fabric to create these really fun applique designs. For a more traditional take, there's this one, Wool Applique Heirlooms by Mary Blythe. More traditional uh, materials and patterns, but also a lot of fun. Today I'm referencing our favorite book here, Visible Mending by Arona Konaraj. You can see here where she has some lovely ideas for creative appliques, including these um, moth appliques that she's added to her sweater. Um, I made this one originally and added some embroidery um, details onto it. She has templates in the back here that you can use if you need some help with uh, drawing, although we're going to go for very simple shapes, so it's not absolutely necessary that you have a template, but uh, they are available in this book. In addition, here's another example of applique that I did. This is a project completely unrelated to what we're working on, but this is um, a little hexi flower that I put together, and then I applique it to this uh, project that I'm working on. And I just used a simple whip stitch to attach it to the fabric. And then I added a little running stitch around the outside uh, as decorative. So there's a lot of different ways you can um, do applique and make it your clothing unique. You can even, as Arona mentions in her book here, you don't necessarily have to be covering up a patch or a hole. Uh, with applique, you can add applique because it's fun and it makes your clothing unique and really pretty. Let's talk about the tools and materials you'll need today. You'll need some fabric shears and some thread snips. If you decide to use a template and you're gonna to need to cut it out of paper, you're gonna need paper scissors. Do not use fabric shears to cut paper. You're gonna need some thread. It can be matching or contrasting. It's up to you completely. Uh, ordinary sewing thread is fine. You can also use embroidery th floss to uh, sew down your applique. And I also have some uh, embroidery floss to decorate my um, applique. You're gonna need some needles. An ordinary embroidery or sewing needle will work fine. And you're, you're gonna want some pins to help you out a little bit. And you're gonna need some scrap fabric to create your applique with. Okay, let's get started. First of all, you need to choose a shape for your applique. I'm going to do the moth uh, pattern that Arona Konaraj shows in her book. So first of all, I, I just freehand drew it, but if you wanted to use a template, you would need to then trace that on a piece of paper and cut it out and then trace it onto the, your fabric. And then you wanna cut it out. I'm gonna cut it out roughly here. It's, it's a little easier to maneuver. And then you want to trim it to about a quarter inch away from your drawn line. So, you don't want to be too far away. You don't want to have any uh, too much bulk, but you also want enough that you can comfortably turn it under as you're stitching. Next, if your shape has curves, you're going to want to clip those curves. So this one has curves here, just a couple. Cut two, but not over the line that you've drawn. You can always clip a few more if you need to. And I'm going to cut just a little bit off here at the top to help reduce the bulk. Then you want to fold the edges over onto on approximately uh, the line that you drew 
for the shape. You might discover here that you're going to need to clip a few more curves, depending on your shape. If you have an iron, you can do that, although I used a friction pin here, so if I ironed it, I would lose my little guideline here. Um, if you do use a pen or a pencil, you're going to want to be careful to fold that under it just a little bit because that's not going to disappear. Using a friction, friction, friction pin like I did here, when I iron it, the line will disappear. So I'm not quite so concerned about getting exactly on that line. Lay your applique pieces on your sampler fabric, approximately where you want them, and then use a couple pins to hold them in place. Okay, now it's time to attach our um, applique. Now I'm just using an ordinary sewing thread, um, doubled, I'm using gray, which matches pretty close to the applique piece, but you don't necessarily have to do that. If you take really tiny stitches, it won't show, or maybe you want it to show. That can be a decorative element as well. So there's a, several different stitches you can use. Uh, you can use a simple whip stitch, which is what I used in this example. You can barely see the stitches. The thread matches both the applique and the background fabric pretty closely, so it doesn't show very much. You can also use what's called a slip stitch, um, and you could, or you could use a blanket stitch, which would be a decorative element as well. So I'm gonna show you real quick here uh, the slip stitch. So you're gonna fold your, the edge of your applique fabric over, and you're gonna bring up your needle in that crease there. And then you pick up just a tiny bit of fabric from your base fabric, your foundation fabric, in our case here, our sampler, just a tiny piece and bring that up. And then you're going to slip your needle back into that crease and bring it up again a little bit further, maybe a quarter of an inch further. You can make it as really tiny if you want. You don't want to make it too big because you want the applique to hold down um, securely. Keep turning the hem under as you go pick up a tiny piece of background fabric. And then slip through in that crease. You're not going all the way through See, just a tiny piece of uh, stitches in the back. You're kind of slipping in between the um, folded edge of the applique. Sometimes this is called needle turn applique because you can use your needle to help turn that hem under. I do think this takes a little bit longer than the simple whip stitch, which I think goes much quicker. But this is pretty much invisible if you're doing it with the tiny stitches. So I'm not super practiced at this yet. I need to do a little bit more. Um, I find I have a little bit of trouble with tension. I tend to pull it too tight. So just kind of keep an eye on that. Pull it, add it a little bit. See the edge. Okay, here are my finished 
wings applique down. Um, I used an iron. I had used a Frickson pin to create my lines and I used an iron to erase those a little bit. So it turned out pretty nice. It's a little rough around the edges, but I think it's gonna work just fine. Now the fun part, I'm going to add some embroidery details. I'm gonna put a little moth body and head here, and then I'm gonna add some decorative uh, details to the wings. Okay, here's my finished moth applique. I just added a few simple embroidery stitches to decorate it with. And now I'm going to attach my uh, felt patch that I made back in episode two. I'm going to use a blanket stitch and I'm using a contrasting color so it really shows up nicely. Add some decorative um, elements there. So it's real simple to do. You just, uh, the spacing between stitches and the length of stitches, it's up to you. Um, I'm going about a quarter inch from the edge and then from the front and then bringing the needle up behind keeping my thread behind the needle and then just pull it through until it's uh, your stitch is straight. Don't pull too hard. Keep your tension even. But it's very simple, especially on these felt patches. Really goes quick and easy. I'm using embroidery floss in this case. You can uh, use sewing thread if you'd like. But in this case, I'm using three strands of embroidery floss. That's it for today. I hope you enjoyed this episode and were inspired to try it yourself. We would love to see what you create. So if you have an Instagram account and you post a picture, please include the hashtag DPL Visible Mending. DPL stands for Davenport Public Library. You can also tag the library at their Instagram account, which is at Davenport Library. If you have questions or suggestions, you can also email me at ahetzler at davenportlibrary.com. I hope you'll join us again next week when we'll be stitching reverse applique. Until then, happy stitching. Mm -hmm.